Hello everyone, welcome back to Analog Snippets. Miller compensation is probably the most popular form of frequency compensation in analog design. Simple Miller compensation is pretty easy to understand and implement. And we have discussed this compensation scheme in many previous videos. But it has several disadvantages. But the most concerning issue in CMOS design is the presence of right hand plane zero. Over the years, several techniques have been developed to mitigate the effects of this right hand plane zero. In this video, we will discuss one such scheme, which is simple, yet very powerful and popular. So let's start by intuitively understanding the right hand plane zero. Here we have a simple model of two stage Miller compensated OTA. The Miller effect is caused by feedback around the second stage, which is an inverting stage. But this feedback through the compensation capacitor is a bidirectional feedback, which means there is a feedback as well as a feed forward path. And it is this feed forward path which causes the zero. Another way to understand it is that there are two paths from the input of second stage to the output of second stage. One path is through the GM2, which is frequency independent, and other path is through this Miller capacitor, which is frequency dependent. And at certain complex frequency, these two paths cancel out and create a zero. Now, since the second stage is an inverting stage, the polarity of these two paths is opposite. And that is the reason that it is a right hand plane zero. There is a more intuitive way to understand it if we simplify this circuit. So we will take out everything else and just focus on the zero. Let's consider a GM followed by a capacitor. GM could be either non-inverting or inverting as in our Miller compensation. A GM can be modeled by a voltage dependent current source. And non-inverting GM will point to upward direction and inverting GM will point to the downwards direction. This circuit is an ideal integrator. The magnitude Bode plot of the both circuit would be a constant roll off of minus 20 dB per decade. The non-inverting integrator will have minus 90 degree phase. In the inverting case, the inversion causes additional 180 degree phase drop. So phase in inverting case would be minus 270 degrees. This minus 270 degree angle can also be mapped to plus 90 degree angle. So far so good. Now let's add the Miller capacitor. In fact, the Miller effect is not really present in this case. This is because since the voltage V1 is an ideal voltage source, the feedback capacitor doesn't have any impact on it. Essentially, there is no feedback in this configuration. So what is the effect of adding CC? At lower frequency, this circuit still behaves like an integrator. And this is because at lower frequencies, impedance of CC is pretty large, so it doesn't impact the low frequency operation. But at high frequencies, the conductance of capacitor completely swamps the GM. And this circuit basically behaves like a capacitive divider circuit. The output to input ratio becomes a constant based on the capacitor values. The magnitude plot stops rolling off and becomes a constant. So we can clearly see a zero in this magnitude plot over here. How about phase? So at high frequencies, when the behavior is dominated by capacitor divider, the phase of V out follows the phase of V input. And that means at high frequencies, phase becomes zero. And it is true for both the non-inverting and the inverting configurations. So in case of non-inverting configuration, the phase becomes from minus 90 to zero. And in case of inverting configuration, it becomes zero from plus 90 degrees. So from this intuitive analysis, we can see that the non-inverting configuration results in a left hand plane zero and the inverting configuration results in the right hand plane zero. Both type of zeros have same magnitude plot, but they differ in their phase plots. So this was another way to understand why a simple Miller compensation creates a right hand plane zero. The reason is basically the inverting GM stage and the feed forward through the Miller capacitor. But this right hand plane zero is not good for the stability. So before considering adding a nulling register in series with the compensation capacitor, let's first consider what happens if there is only the nulling register between input and output. So here we have a RZ connected between input and output. 
we are only considering the inverting GM configuration here. At cursory glance, it may appear that adding RZ may add a zero to the system. But this is not what is happening here. The reason is that uh, even though it may seem that there are now two paths from input to output, none of these two paths are frequency dependent. When we look at the transfer function, we can make many interesting observations. First of all, it's no more an integrated circuit. It's more like a low pass filter now. If RZ tends to infinity, which means that RZ is not there, then this equation degenerates into the familiar integrator equation. On the other extreme, if RZ tends to zero, then transfer function becomes unity. And this also makes perfect sense because we are now effectively shorting input and output. But you can see that in between something interesting happened over here. As we reduce RZ, the gain becomes from inverting to non-inverting. And this change happens when GM RZ is equal to 1. In fact, at that condition, gain is precisely 0. And this also makes perfect sense. Because under this condition, the current into RZ is perfectly cancelled by the current into GM. The key point to remember here is that if RZ is greater than 1 over GM, then this stage remains inverting. Now let's add the Miller capacitor to this nulling register. So after adding both the nulling register and the Miller capacitor, this is the transfer function we get. And we can notice a number of interesting things. First of all, adding RZ makes this transfer function a second order transfer function. So RZ adds another pull to the system. And this is because this RZ breaks the rigid loop formed by the ideal voltage source and the series capacitors. See video 19 for the more details. Looking at the zero frequency, if GMRZ is equal to one, then this frequency moves to the infinity, which is same as saying that zero has been removed. But it gets even better. If we set the GMRZ value greater than one, then this factor in denominator becomes negative. And that means we have created a zero in the left hand plane. And this left hand plane zero can be a great help when stabilizing the system. So not only we got rid of the bad zero, we also gained a good zero. But how did that happen? After all, we still have these two paths from input to output. And these two paths still have the opposite polarity. Actually, having opposite polarity is not the problem. The real problem with the simple mirror compensation is that the feed forward current overwhelms the transconductance current. This is because as frequency increases, the conductance of capacitor increases linearly. So it is bound to overtake the transconductance, which is constant, at some frequency. But if we add a resistor in series, this doesn't happen anymore. After adding this RZ, the maximum conductance of this feed forward path is limited by this RZ. And if we make sure that this RZ is greater than 1 over GM, then the overall path never reverses the polarity. As a result, we don't get the right hand zero. Okay, let's come back to left hand plane zero. This left hand zero comes with a left hand pool. So this left hand plane zero is only useful if it occurs at the lower frequency as compared to the pool. So let's consider how this zero and the new pool moves as we increase RZ from zero onwards. So when the RZ value is zero, we have a right hand plane zero and there is no second pole. That means the second pole is at minus infinity. Now, as we increase the RZ, the zero starts to move on the right direction and pole starts to also move to the right direction. Notice that pole always remains in the left hand plane. And that makes sense because otherwise the system will be unstable. Now, when GMRZ becomes 1, the right hand 0 reaches plus infinity frequencies. When we further increase the RZ value from here onwards, the 0 actually moves to the left hand plane and then starts to move from minus infinity to the right side. In the initial phase of this movement, the 0 is at the higher frequency as compared to the new pole. But as we keep on increasing the R, the 0 takes over the pole. 
we can find that condition if we make the zero and pole frequency equal. So for this value of GMRG, the zero and second pole frequency are same. And it also means that if we want to take advantage of left hand plane zero, the GMRG value should be much greater than this value. Now, I must caution that this analysis is being made on a very simplified system. So use it for building your intuitive understanding. So in this video, we have seen that how nulling racer can be used to solve the right hand plane zero introduced by the simple Miller compensation. But this is not the only method. In next video, we will look at couple of more method intuitively to solve this right hand zero problem. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.